All right, so today we're going to get into something uh, pretty interesting. Okay. We're diving into size and confidence through this interview with Jonah Falcon. Okay. Um, he's the guy who is believed to have the world's largest penis. Wow. Now, I know this is a delicate subject. Yeah. But I think we can handle it maturely. Of course. And this is less about the shock value. Yeah. And more about understanding you know, his life, his experiences. And right. he actually made headlines after a security alert at an airport. Really? And this interview really digs into what it's like to live with, you know, such a unique physical attribute. Fascinating. So picture this. Okay. Jonah's at San Francisco airport. Yeah. And well, his anatomy triggers a security alert. Oh my goodness. And you would think that he would be mortified, right? Yeah, for sure. He's totally chill about it. Wow. He even contacted the media himself. Real. It's a real sense of him owning the situation. Yeah. Um, and using humor as a shield. I like that. He said, I wasn't worried because what was the worst that was going to happen? Yeah. I have to pull it out for them. I've been doing that all my life. Wow. I mean, can you imagine having that level of nonchalance? It speaks to a deep level of self-acceptance. Right. Like, he's just not letting embarrassment yeah. dictate his reactions. Exactly. And you know what? It wasn't even the TSA who flagged him. Oh. It was a private security firm. Interesting. So it adds, like, a whole other layer to it. Fitness. Different standards, maybe. Right, right. Now we got to talk about the size. Okay. Because, yeah. let's be honest, that's what a lot of people are curious about. Right. So the interviewers actually used a diagram mm -hmm. to compare, like, the average flaccid penis to... Jonas. Oh, we're talking three to four inches versus nine inches. Nine inches flaccid. And wow, that's a significant difference. Huge difference. And when erect? Thirteen and a half. Wow. Yeah. So it puts things into perspective. It really does. And you know what's his response to all this? What's that? I go with nine because it's a better number. He's got a sense of humor about it. Always a comedian. Yeah. But do you think there's a deeper layer there? Maybe so. Perhaps like a way of you know, controlling the narrative and diffusing potential discomfort. Could be. When did Jonah first realize he was different? Yeah, that's a good question. He talks about being 10 years old, uh, measuring himself. Yeah. And seeing that he was already eight inches. Oh, wow. And he just thought, whatever. Really? Yeah, just like that. No big reaction. Just matter of fact. That's interesting. But think about that psychological impact. Yeah. At such a young age to have that self-awareness. Yeah, for sure. He was at a mostly Jewish school uh -huh. and the only uncircumcised boy there. Okay. He said that everyone was aware of his size. Wow. But no one ever talked about it. So it was like this unspoken. Yeah, like this unspoken awareness. Interesting. Maybe yeah. even a sense of taboo. Yeah. You wonder how that impacted his relationships and his sense of belonging. Absolutely. Growing up. It's like this big secret that everyone is tiptoeing around. Oh, right. What do you think was going through his mind? Hard to say. As a kid, you know, navigating that. Yeah. Maybe he developed coping mechanisms. Could be. Or maybe this is what fueled his desire to be so open later in life. That's a good point. All right. So let's shift gears and talk about his dating life. Okay. Particularly between the ages of 19 and 25. Right. He calls it his hog wild phase. Hog wild. A period of intense promiscuity. I see. And he's very candid about it. Okay. And he connects this phase to his self-esteem. How so? He admits that he was seeking validation ah. through these encounters. Right. And eventually it takes a toll. Mm -hmm. He talks about burnout weight gain. Of course. The emotional drain of that lifestyle. It's a reminder that even attention can have a dark side, mm -hmm. even when it seems positive. And it makes you think about the societal pressures, yeah. especially on men, right. to find validation through sexual conquests. Like he's trying to fill a void with those experiences. Possibly. What about the women in his life? Yeah. The interviewers actually put it directly to the audience. Yes. Wow. They said, what would it be like to date someone with such a unique feature? Interesting. So that means you listening right now. Right. What would it be like? Yeah. Is it just curiosity? Yeah. Could a relationship like that last? So many questions. It really challenges our preconceived notions about attraction and relationships. What makes a relationship successful? Exactly. Physical attributes versus emotional connection. Yeah. Societal norms you know, influencing our choices. All those factors. And Jonah, he offers some insights. Okay. He says that older, more experienced women tend to stick around longer. Interesting. So that suggests that they're looking for more than just a 
physical experience. Right. Maybe there's a deeper connection, a deeper level of understanding. Right. So we've covered a lot of ground yeah. from the airport to his early life to this hog wild phase. Right. And, you know, talking about the female perspective. Yeah. But we also have to address, like, the practical considerations. Yeah, of course. Right. I mean, the interviewers even asked about potential complications in the bedroom. Okay. And whether there's pain involved. And what did he say? Well, his response is really telling. Okay. He emphasizes foreplay. Uh huh. He describes himself as service oriented. Really? So it suggests this level of awareness and consideration. So he's trying to mitigate any potential issues. Right. And prioritize his partner's comfort. I'm curious about the condom situation. Yeah, me too. He talks about the challenges of finding condoms that fit properly. Makes sense. And his preference for looser condoms. Okay. I think it's refreshing yeah. to have such open conversations. Absolutely. About these topics. Yeah. That are often considered taboo. Definitely. Speaking of taboo subjects. Yeah. We have to touch upon the porn industry. Okay. Jonah actually received a ton of offers, especially when he was younger. Right. I can imagine. And yet he chose not to go down that path. Why is that? Well, he draws a distinction between being a show-off, which he admits to, yeah. and actually performing sexually in public. Right. So there's a boundary for him Interesting. between what he's comfortable with and what feels exploitative right. or you know, crosses the line. It highlights the complexities of navigating fame yeah. and attention. Especially when it's tied to something so personal. Absolutely. Okay. So we've talked about the casual encounters. Yeah. But what about love? Right? Does he want a real relationship? If he does, he yeah. expresses a desire for romance uh -huh. and long-term love. Okay. But also worries about being defined by his penis. I see. He mentions being concerned about, you know, how it might affect his work prospects, mm. especially in certain industries. Right. He names Disney specifically. Oh, wow. Which is kind of funny. But also reveals this genuine anxiety right. about being judged or limited yeah. because of this one attribute. It makes you think about how often we define people by a single characteristic. For sure. Whether it's physical or something else entirely. So true. Yeah. It's a reminder to look beyond surface appearances. Right. And try to see the whole person. Absolutely. Speaking of appearances, the interview also touches on how Jonah used to dress. Okay. To accentuate his size. Really? He's very candid about it. How so? He says, um, I did yes, just like that. Sometimes I'd make it so it goes to around the side of my leg. Wow. He's not shying away from his past behaviors. It seems like he's very comfortable with himself now. Yeah, but what's really striking is his current mindset. What is it? He says that he wouldn't change anything about himself. Wow. It's such a powerful statement of self-acceptance. It really is. Like he's come to terms with his body and who he is. Yeah. Despite the challenges yeah. and the societal pressures. It challenges us to examine our own insecurities. That's right. The things we might want to change about ourselves. Right. Are those desires driven by genuine personal aspirations yeah. or mm -hmm. societal expectations? Good question. That's something we should all ask ourselves. I agree. Now, before we get too deep into that, yeah. we need to address some common myths about penis size. Okay. We'll do that when we come back in part two of our deep dive into Jonah Falcon's fascinating world. Looking forward to it. Back again with our deep dive into Jonah Falcon's story. It's really amazing how open he is about something so personal. It is, right? And he could have easily shut down those questions, uh, but he just tackles them head on with a sense of humor. It speaks volumes about his comfort level with himself. Yeah. He's not letting shame or stigma you know right dictate his narrative exactly and it brings us back to something he mentioned what's that about how his size might actually hold him back in certain jobs oh yeah he mentioned disney yeah and it was a lighthearted comment yeah but it underscores a real concern of course about being judged based on a physical attribute it makes you think about how many people face similar anxieties yeah Maybe not as visible as Jonah's situation, right? but still feeling judged for something about their appearance. Absolutely. And it raises questions about inclusivity right. in different professional spheres. Yeah. Are there unspoken biases that limit opportunities based on how someone looks? It's definitely something to think about. It is. And going back to those public reactions. Yeah. You know, Jonah used to deliberately draw attention to himself. Right. But now it seems like he shifted his focus. There's an evolution there. Yeah. Like he's moving from seeking external validation to 
you know, yeah. cultivating inner confidence. And self-acceptance. Exactly. Remember what he said? He wouldn't change a thing about himself. Yeah. Powerful statement. That's a powerful statement of self-love. In a world that's obsessed with, you know, yeah. fixing what's perceived as different. It challenges us to reconsider those expectations. For sure. And celebrate our differences. Embrace who you are, yeah. flaws and all. It's like he's saying, this is me, take it or leave it. Exactly. And that's so empowering. It is. But it also makes you think about empathy. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to judge or make assumptions about people. Right, based on how they look. Jonah's story reminds us that everyone has a story. Absolutely. And those stories are often way more complex than we imagine. Right. It's a call for open-mindedness. Yeah. Ask questions instead of jumping to conclusions. Speaking of assumptions, yeah. we have to talk about how the media often portrays Jonah. You mean the focus on the sensational aspects of his size? Exactly. How do we balance the public's curiosity right. with an individual's right to privacy and respect? It's a tough one. It is. He chose to share his story. Yeah. But not everyone would. Right. And even when someone is open, uh -huh. there's always a risk of exploitation or misrepresentation. So as consumers of media, yeah, we have a responsibility to be critical. Right. And to think about the impact our attention has on people's lives. It's about being mindful of the power dynamics yeah. and advocating for ethical storytelling. But zooming out even further, okay. Jonah's story touches on a universal struggle. And that is? Body image. Of course. It's something we all deal with. Yeah. This pressure to conform to certain ideals. Right. And Jonah's journey to self-acceptance is a powerful reminder yeah. that true confidence comes from within. It's about embracing who you are yeah. and celebrating your unique strengths. That message is crucial, especially yeah. for young people who are bombarded with these right. unrealistic beauty standards. It's a call to redefine beauty, yeah. to celebrate diversity and promote healthy self-esteem. So as we wrap up part two, I'm left thinking about how Jonah's experience Right. While extraordinary, right. has some really relatable lessons. It's a reminder that there's no one right way to be human. We all have our own journeys, filled with ups and downs. For sure. And it's about embracing those journeys, learning from them, yeah, growing along the way. And recognizing that our differences are what make us interesting. What make us human. Beautifully said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Jonah Falcon's world. We hope. We hope it sparked some thought-provoking conversations and encouraged you to embrace your own unique journey. See you next time. For another fascinating exploration of the world around us. And we are back for the final part of our deep dive into Jonah Falcon's life. It's really about size and confidence and challenging norms, right? Yeah, and what it all means for, you know, all of us. Exactly. I kind of want to shift gears in this last part. Okay. What can we learn from Jonah's story, even if our experiences are totally different? It's a great question. You know, like what are the takeaways here? Well, I think for, for me, one of the biggest takeaways is the power of owning your own narrative. Uh huh. Like he could have hidden in shame. Yeah. But he chose to be open about it. Yeah. And even funny about his situation. Yeah. And he turned what some might consider a burden. Yeah. You, you a platform for conversation. That takes guts. Yeah. Especially in a world that's, you know, so obsessed with fitting in. Totally. And it's like, He's saying, this is me, take it or leave it. Exactly. That's so empowering. It is. But it also makes you think about empathy. Yeah. Like how easy it is to judge or make assumptions about people just based on how they look. Right. Jonah reminds us that everyone has a story. And those stories are often a lot more complex than we imagine. It's a call for open-mindedness. Yeah. To ask questions instead yeah. of just jumping to conclusions. Speaking of assumptions. Yeah. How about how the media portrays Jonah? Right. The focus on the sensational. Yeah. The sensational aspects of his size. Does that raise some ethical questions for you? Yeah, for sure. Like, how do we balance right. the public's curiosity yeah. with an individual's right to privacy and respect? It's tough. You did. You know, Jonah chose to share his story, but not everyone would. And even when someone is open, mm -hmm. there's a risk of exploitation or being misrepresented. Yeah. So as consumers of media, yeah. we have a responsibility to be critical. Right. And to think about, you know, yeah. the impact of our attention yeah. on people's lives. It's about being mindful right. of those power dynamics. And advocating for ethical storytelling. But let's zoom out even further. Okay. Jonah's story touches on this universal struggle. 
Body image. Yeah, body image. It's something that we all deal with. Of course. You know, the pressure to conform to it's, certain ideals. Yeah. And his journey to self-acceptance uh -huh. is really powerful. It is. It shows us that true confidence has to come from within. It's about embracing who you are, flaws and all. Yeah, celebrating those unique strengths. And that message is crucial. Yeah, especially for young people. Right. Who are bombarded with these unrealistic beauty standards. It's a call to redefine beauty, uh -huh. to celebrate diversity, and promote healthy self-esteem. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. I'm thinking about how Jonah's experience, while extraordinary, right. has some really relatable lessons for all of us. It's a reminder that there's no one right way to be human. But we all have our own journeys. Absolutely. You know, filled with ups and downs. And it's about embracing those journeys. Yeah. Learning from them, growing along the way. And recognizing that our differences are what make us interesting. And what make us human. Beautifully said. Thank you for joining us for this deep dive into Jonah Falcon's world. I hope you've enjoyed it. We hope it's sparked some thought-provoking conversations. Yeah. And that it's encouraged you to embrace your own unique journey. Until next time. See you later.